We sent a probe on a one-way trip to Pluto, and it took nearly a decade. That mission, New Horizons, was a landmark achievement, finally giving us a complete photo album of the classical solar system. But it was just a flyby, a fleeting glimpse of a world three billion miles away. So, what would it take to go back, to actually stop, and then to come home? If you think a 10-year, one-way trip sounds long, the reality of a round trip is almost beyond comprehension. It's not as simple as just doubling the time. Using the same technology that first got us to Pluto, a return mission isn't just difficult, it's functionally impossible within a human lifetime. You'd be looking at a journey that could easily stretch to 40 years or more, and that's for a robot. The physics of hitting the brakes at the edge of the solar system reveals one of the greatest challenges in all of space exploration. To really get why a return journey is so tough, you first have to appreciate the monumental feat of just getting there. On January 19, 2006, NASA's New Horizon spacecraft launched from Cape Canaveral, bolted to an immensely powerful Atlas V rocket. It screamed away from Earth at over 36,000 miles per hour, becoming the fastest object humanity had ever launched. It blew past the moon's orbit in a mere nine hours. But even at that incredible speed, a straight shot to Pluto would have taken about 14 years. To cut that down, mission planners used a cheat code written into the laws of physics, a gravity assist. A little over a year into its mission, New Horizons swung past Jupiter. The gas giant's massive gravity acted like a cosmic slingshot flinging the probe and boosting its speed by another 9,000 miles per hour. This single maneuver was critical. It shaved three years off the travel time. After that, the spacecraft spent most of the next eight years in electronic hibernation, silently coasting through the void to save its systems. Finally, on July 14, 2015, after nine and a half years and a journey of over three billion miles, it arrived. New Horizons gave us our first breathtaking look at a world of towering ice mountains, nitrogen glaciers, and a surprisingly complex atmosphere. This is where the round-trip dream slams into a brutal wall of physics. New Horizons didn't stop at Pluto. It flew past at roughly 31,000 miles per hour. Why? Because in space, stopping is, in many ways, a harder problem than getting going. Think of it like this. New Horizons was the cosmic equivalent of a bullet. To slow that bullet down enough for Pluto's weak gravity to capture it, the spacecraft would have needed to fire a massive rocket engine in the opposite direction. That means it would have had to carry all the fuel for that braking maneuver, for billions of miles, all the way from Earth. The amount of fuel needed would have been astronomical. It would have made the spacecraft so heavy at launch that the Atlas V rocket could never have gotten it moving fast enough to reach Pluto in a decade. This is the core dilemma. To get to Pluto in a reasonable time, you have to go incredibly fast. But if you go that fast, you can't stop. A mission designed to actually orbit Pluto would have to travel much slower. Scientists estimate an orbiter using current chemical rockets would need 12 to 15 years just for the one-way trip. That's an extra three to five years of travel time just to make slowing down possible. And even then, the fuel requirements would be immense. New Horizons was the size of a grand piano. A Pluto orbiter would need to be far more massive to haul all that extra propellant. So, let's try to map out this impossible journey. First, the trip out. We'll be generous and use the slower orbiter estimate. That's about 15 years to get to Pluto and successfully break into orbit. Now, you can't just turn around and head home. Earth and Pluto are on their own massive tracks around the sun, and you have to wait for them to be in the right place for an efficient return journey. Pluto takes 248 Earth years to complete a single orbit, and its path is a long, stretched-out ellipse. Its distance from the sun varies wildly. Depending on where Pluto is in its vast orbit, the wait for a return window could be years or even decades, while you wait for the planets and any gravity assist opportunities to align. Let's assume we get incredibly lucky 
and the wait is only a few years. Then comes the return journey itself. You'd need another massive fuel burn to break out of Pluto's orbit and accelerate back toward the inner solar system. This trip would likely take another 15 years, mirroring the journey out. So, when you add it all up, 15 years out, a multi-year wait, and 15 years back, you are looking at a total mission time of 35 to 40 years, absolute minimum. And remember, this is for a machine. It's mind-boggling to think about missions that last longer than the careers of the scientists who designed them. If you find the sheer scale of these cosmic puzzles as fascinating as I do, consider subscribing for more explorations of what it takes to reach for the stars. If a 40-year robotic round trip is on the bleeding edge of what's possible, what about sending astronauts? With today's technology, a crewed mission to Pluto is pure science fiction. The challenges are staggering. First, there's the weight. A spacecraft that could support humans for decades would be colossal. It would need living quarters, life support, and decades worth of food, water, and air. This would make the vessel exponentially heavier than any robotic probe, pushing the fuel problem from extremely difficult to laughably impossible with current rockets. Second, and most critically, is radiation. Earth's magnetic field protects us from deadly cosmic rays. Once you travel into deep space for years on end, the cumulative radiation dose becomes lethal. We simply don't have the technology to effectively shield a crew for a multi-decade journey to the outer solar system. And finally, there's the tyranny of distance. At Pluto, a radio signal takes about 4.5 hours to reach Earth. That means a simple, Houston, we have a problem, and its reply would involve a nine-hour delay. Any emergency would have to be handled by the crew, all alone, with mission control unable to help in real time. This entire scenario is based on current technology, chemical rockets and gravity assists. But what does the future hold? Engineers have been developing next-generation propulsion that could rewrite the rulebook, Ion Propulsion, which uses electric fields to create a small but continuous thrust, is far more fuel efficient and could potentially shorten a Pluto trip. The real game changer, though, has always been nuclear propulsion. A nuclear thermal rocket would use a reactor to heat propellant, creating much more powerful and efficient thrust. For years, NASA and DARPA were actively working on this with the Draco program. Unfortunately, as of mid-2025, that program has been canceled. Citing high research costs and the falling price of conventional launches, developers decided it was no longer a worthwhile investment. More exotic ideas, like fusion rockets, remain a distant dream. So for now, the technologies that could make a Pluto round trip feasible are back on the drawing board. So how long will it take to get to Pluto and back? With the technology we have today, the honest answer is longer than a lifetime. While a one-way flyby was a historic achievement, the physics of slowing down and coming home make a round trip a completely different beast. A robotic mission would take half a century, while a human one is simply beyond our reach. The journey of New Horizons wasn't just about visiting a distant world. It was a lesson in scale. It showed us just how vast our solar system truly is. The challenge of a return trip isn't a dead end. It's the next great problem waiting for a new generation of scientists and dreamers to solve. It's a reminder that our greatest adventures are always pushing the boundaries of what's possible. If you enjoyed exploring this idea with me, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next videos.